duck diving. It's a key skill for most surfers and when we're looking to push ourselves in the waves we're surfing by surfing bigger and heavier waves, the duck dive makes things much easier to paddle out, conserve energy and catch more waves, meaning we don't have to wait for a lull to get out the back. There's lots of mistakes we can make learning to duck dive however, as it's not as intuitive as we'd like it to be. And then for bigger boards, sometimes it can feel hopeless trying to get these boards that are longer or carrying more volume underneath the surface of the water. Well, today I'm going to share with you my favourite tips and tricks for duck diving the smaller and bigger boards in your quiver, so let's get into it. everyone so today what I wanted to do is just show you a little bit about how I go about duck diving different boards um, we'll start off with the short board because it is a little bit easier and this is where we can get the fundamentals down pat um, and then the same technique will transfer over to the long board but there's a few little tips and tricks that I like to use so that we can actually get these big boards under the water that being said for our duck diving uh, it is very dependent on I guess our strength as well as the size of the board. There are some boards that we just won't be able to get down, but with this technique that I'll show you today, we should be able to get a, um, some bigger boards and definitely some mini mouths and also some long boards under the water so we can duck dive and make our way out into the water a little bit easier. So, starting off with our short boards. So, for the short board, the uh, main thing that we want to remember at the start is that we're setting ourselves up with our hands right by our chest. So the board is here, I'm going to have the hands right next to the chest. A problem that we see a lot of the time is the hands coming all the way up here because intuitively we may think, okay, we want to get the front of the board down so we can get underneath the wave. But if our hands are all the way here and we're pushing the board down, it is going to be easier to get the front of the board under the water. But then what will happen is the tail will look like this and it's going to be pretty much a, a tail that is high in the air and the white water will knock into it we're not actually going to be able to get the whole board underneath the wave, which is a big problem. This is probably uh, problem number one that we see people make when they're learning to duck dive. So what we want to make sure we're doing is keeping our hands around about near the ribs. By having them at the ribs, we're actually going to have our hands a little bit further back. And this is really, really handy to try and get the majority of the board underneath the water, um, which stops that problem of having that high tail. And when we start to press on the back of the board, which we'll talk about soon, uh, it just makes it easier for that as well. So we can get the board underneath the wave properly. So from here, with a short board, we can do a flat push. So our hands are in the right position and we push the board down underneath the water. Now again, timing is really, really important here and that's something we can maybe discuss in another video. But we're gonna push the board down equally with both hands and allow that board or the nose of the board to sink down. Now, a lot of the time we might think initially that we're doing this incorrectly if we still have a little bit of a tail rise. So the whole board isn't going down all at once but we won't be able to get the board to go down all at once. There will still be a bit of a rise in the tail and that's okay. That's what we're gonna try and uh, work on for the second thing that we need to do for the duck dive. So it's gonna be a flat push down equally with both hands. What we're gonna talk about now is probably the second major thing that we see go wrong with our duck diving. Now, a lot of us will know already with our duck diving that we don't only push down with our hands, but we also push in with our knee or our toe depending on your preference and the board that you're on. And a lot of the time what we will see is people pushing in with their hands and then not adjusting their position. So their chest is still going to be over their hands and they're just trying to push into the tail all at once. They're unable to get the board underneath the wave properly. They're gonna be crashed into by the white water uh, and not have so much success there. What we actually need to do, which is a really important thing, is actually after we've pushed our board down, we want to get the nose as low as it will go. And then we actually need to slide ourselves back on the tail. I'll show you this on the long board because it might make a bit more sense. So what we're actually going to do here is imagine this is a short board or a long board because it's the same for either. And we're going to be pushing down 
And instead of just trying to push the knee in, push the foot in from here, what we actually need to be doing is firstly, we're, we've gotten our nose down to as far down as it will go. And then we're actually going to slide our chest over the knee, okay? So we're actually going to push our body weight backwards. So we're bending at the knees, bending at the hips, so that our chest comes over the knee. Now, I like to extend one leg out because it allows me to keep my body more streamlined as we're going underneath the wave. And so, again, we push down to get the nose down as far as it will go. When it is as far down as it will go and we're trying to get ourselves underneath the wave, we're going to get low and bring our body over our knee and use our, either our knee or our foot to extend or push uh, into the tail of the board. Now, as we bring our chest over the knee and then we're apl applying the pressure to the tail, this is going to have a seesaw effect where now we're actually leveling out the tail with the nose into the point where we're actually gonna catapult it the other way where the tail will become lower and that's what will drive or give us speed, that corkscrew effect, where we're actually seeing our board travel up towards the surface of the water. And so if we time this correctly and we do this right, what we're gonna see is we're gonna get our body underneath the wave um, by the time that the wave is passing over us. And once the wave has passed over us, or as it is, we're gonna apply pressure to the tail by sliding ourselves back and pushing into the tail and then we're gonna drive ourselves up to the surface and then we can keep on paddling. Let's also transfer that over to the longboard. So the things that we need to know about the longboard. Um, now, firstly, obviously this board is going to be a lot, a lot harder to get underneath the water than the short board I had over here before, for obvious reasons. Big, thick, heavy, wide, all of the above. And so there's a couple of strategies that we really need to take note of to make sure that we can get this underneath the water. Uh, and it does take a little bit more time. Now, the obvious problems that we can have with the longboard, firstly, if we're just like on the shortboard, if our hands are too far forwards, we are going to have no shot at getting this underneath the water. We're not gonna be able to uh, get the tail underneath the water as well. And there's a few other things that we'll need to look at there, but the same problems we'll run into as we did for the shortboard if our hands are too far forwards. We really wanna make sure that the hands are by the chest. And then the second problem that we'll see when we're trying to duck dive a longboard is pushing directly down into the board equally with both hands at the same time is not going to have the effect that you want. Oftentimes, unless it's a really light longboard or if we're just really, really strong, we may be able to muscle it down but it becomes uh, really, really difficult to get underneath the water. So there's a technique that I like to use for the longboard and it goes like this. What we're going to be doing is we're gonna position our hands exactly where we said at the start, but then we're actually going to prioritize one rail and drive one rail into the water first. What this will do is it's gonna make it a lot easier to actually push the board underneath the water and get access to, I guess, below the surface of the water. We're pushing the board down flat with the large surface area is going to be pretty much impossible. You'll come to a point in time when that rail is as low as it will go. Now, if we don't do anything from here, the board's just gonna fly upwards and it's gonna be very, very off balancing. It won't work. The white world will crash into us. So what we wanna do when that rail is down as low as it possibly can be, is we're gonna equalize it by pushing the other rail down. So it'll kind of look like this, where we push one rail and then we equalize it to make sure that it, the board is now flat underneath the water. This can take a little bit of time to get used to, so there's a little technique that I like to use, and this is where we actually just press into one rail, forget about the duck dive for the moment, so complete this when there's no waves coming, pressing one rail down and then just pushing down with the other rail to equalize the board when it's at the low point in the water, and then just let it rise up and do that a few times. So pushing one rail down, equalizing with the other and letting the board drift upwards. This will just give you a really good feel for how it's going to feel when you are uh, attempting the uh, duck dive with the longboard. Now from here, we're gonna cover through the same fundamentals that we covered for the shortboard. Um, and they still apply for the longboard, but with all of those steps together. So again, finding a place on the board. First step is the hands right near the ribs, right near the chest. Um, and then what we're going to do firstly is coming up, pressing into one side of the rail, so that prioritizing one side of the rail to get the board under. And then we're gonna equalize to uh, le level out the board whilst it's underwater. 
And once we have done that, that's when we're actually going to bring our chest over the back foot, over the back knee, and then we're gonna compress or push in with the back toe or knee to bring ourselves up towards the surface. So they're the main things that we wanna be thinking about with the duck dive. Um, and everyone has little, I guess, differences and nuances with how they duck dive. I guess the main one would be, do you prefer to put the uh, foot into the tail or the knee into the tail? Just personally for myself, uh, I like to, if, it's a, if I'm on a shortboard, something quite small, uh, and I'm just duck diving a small wave, I'll just put my knee into the back of the board just because I don't need a ton of pressure and it's not like I'm gonna have a really big wave to get underneath. But if the waves are picking up in size and I do have to get myself under a big wave, even on a shortboard, what I'll do is I'll just make sure that my foot is engaged or my toe is engaged with the tail so that I can really drive into the tail with my foot. And then for a longboard, I am always using my foot just because we require that extra pressure uh, into the tail in order to elevate the nose and get ourselves driven up towards the surface of the water. So I'm always using my toe into uh, the back of the board for that. And I'm preparing that early as well. So as I'm bringing myself back with my chest coming back over the knee, I'm already engaging that toe on the board so that I can push in. If you try and push in with your foot against the, uh, the tail with a flat foot so the toes aren't pressed into the board, that's not gonna work either. Something that is worth highlighting is sometimes there are some boards like bigger long boards, old males that just are unable to get ourselves underneath the water. And so we need to employ some other techniques such as the turtle roll, Eskimo roll, um, the up and over and everything like that. So there are some boards where it's just a little bit tricky especially foam boards as well, um, just because of their buoyancy, really difficult to get underneath the water. Not that it can't be done, but it is just a little bit trickier. So um, this technique though, should be able to get you under uh, lots of waves with the duck dive with um, lots of different types of boards, certainly short boards, uh, mini mouths, and then some long boards also. So um, feel free to give that a go. And if you do have any questions about anything I covered today or anything I might've missed, then please feel free to um, put that in the comments below and we can have a little bit of a chat around that too. And that being said, if you have any other uh, suggestions or uh, ideas for future videos on the Sunday Glide, then feel free to leave those in the comments below as well. But we will leave it there for today. I hope you're all getting waves and we'll catch you on the next one. Woo!